Uh, so my name is Lea Ngari. I work as a senior UX uh, researcher at MEDIC. So here talking about the user research activities that we carried out in Q2 uh, in collaboration with care teams and uh, allies team. So we did some uh, generative interviews with care teams and uh, under this, uh, for this quarter, we conducted three interviews. So what we had during these generative interviews uh, is that uh, there are difficulties uh, with onboarding and registering people under the same household. Uh, that formed part of the insights that we, we, we gathered. And as we can see from this table, we, we continue to hear uh, the, uh, that the UI is difficult to navigate, being the one that we have had uh, from majority of the participants uh, that we have interviewed. We also did a customer effort survey with the uh, community health workers and also community health nurses. And during this survey, um, the survey was aimed at uh, assessing the ease of key workflows uh, within the CHT core. And um, we were asking the users to, within a score of five, to tell us uh, on one on, on each of these listed workflows here, uh, how easy it is or how difficult it is, with one being extremely difficult and with five being uh, extremely easy. So as we can see from here, most of them rated them uh, with a score of over two, which was our threshold, uh, meaning that anyone who, any workflow that was rated above two uh, is easy to, uh, to work on. Just to mention that, uh, we, that we had from 318 users uh, in regards to the customer efforts uh, survey. Um, then we also did uh, some interviews uh, with allies team. So we conducted four generative interviews. And from here, uh, so far we have had 25 and majority of our, of our participants have been, uh, have been the app developers. But of course we have been having hearing from implementing partners and also project uh, officers. Um, so for this quarter, um, what, uh, what we had or the insights that came up uh, specifically were that we, they are, they are uh, we had about the difficulties of de debugging, sorry, and also testing of forms and also creating hierarchies and setting permissions. So those are some of the insights that, were, that came out of those generative interviews that we conducted. But of course, from this list, we can see that um, uh, what tops the list or what we have had from the 25 interviews we have conducted so far that uh, it's difficult to test purging rules without deploying them on production. Um, and uh, I think that's all from my end. So uh, for any person who would like to uh, as to collaboratively work on the on the user research activities, feel free to reach us uh, and we can do it with your users. Thank you. There is an, someone who's requesting to know a little more about what people liked about um, the entire user experience or some of the um, surveys that you had done. What did people like most about them? So um, because this was... Uh, well, so the, the survey was basically on the assessing of the, uh, the ease uh, on the usage of these different workflows. Um, so we'll be going within our, like during our next interviews or generative interviews, we'll be digging deeper uh, to understand exactly uh, what is this they liked. So the survey gave us just like a, a, a direction of where we might want to hear through the, through the interviews next. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Michael Cohn, and am I, I'm a product manager at Medic. I'm excited to share some updates on some work we're doing that will facilitate database decision making. As Leah just mentioned, we are regularly interviewing health workers to listen to their stories and observe their usage of the CHT. 
this qualitative research is super important and has really been the primary way we've been able to learn about how health workers are interacting with the CHT. Really, our intention is to have these conversations with as many health workers as possible. And it's really important for us to hear these stories from as many health systems as possible. So as Leah mentioned, if we had not had the chance to connect with your health workers from the communities you work in, definitely please reach out to Leah to coordinate. Another really important technique used to understand uh, how health workers are interacting with their apps is through quantitative research. So the quantitative research helps us identify and measure the what and is, is much easier to conduct, conduct across really large, uh, at, at a larger scale. So as an example, using quantitative research in a health system with say 2000 users, we might learn that 90% of health workers are consistently tapping on an area of the screen that is not even designed to be interactive. Uh, or we might learn that you know, 80% of health workers are frequently bouncing back and forth between the people tab and the task tab before completing one certain type of tasks or uh, one certain type of task or perhaps that 90% of health workers are always accessing tasks directly from the people tab instead of, um, as we expect, planning their day from the task tab. So we can really see that sort of stuff at a larger scale. That would be really what our goal is here. So with this information, we can then focus our qualitative research to help answer the why. Uh, why people are interacting this way, and then build solutions to optimize these flows. But until now, the majority of our user research has been qualitative through these one-on-one -on -one conversations with health workers. One of the things that we're working on now is building the infrastructure that will help us do this quantitative research this measurable research where we can see aggregate information about how health workers are navigating through the CHT. To, so to make this a little bit more concrete, I wanted to take you through just an example of what we will be able to see. So each column here represents the different interactions taken when users are navigating. Uh, and in each box, we can see the number of users that took this path. Uh, the data that we're looking at here is just from our development environment, so the volumes are not really indicative of real usage, but you can see that um, most users saw the messages tab first, it's in the, that first interaction all the way on the left, and then they navigated directly to the people tab. And from there, some of them went to the targets tab and then back to the people tab and and then finally, they tapped on a specific household. So like I mentioned, this data is just from uh, a few of us interacting on our development environment. But once this information is av available for a production environment with hundreds or thousands of users, you can imagine the insights that we'll have on really the most common usage patterns of the CHT, which today, we don't really have through these one-on-one -on -one interviews. As you could, as Leah mentioned, we've um, the the scale we're talking about here is you know we've so far talked to less than a uh, hundred users. So here we can we'll be able to see this at a much larger scale. Um, so that's really it. So if you're interested in using this kind of this really concrete usage data like this to help identify opportunities for improving the CHD please reach out to me directly and I'd be happy to show you more and uh, talk about how we can work together to, um, to make this happen. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Philip. Um, I, I work at Medic as a technical product owner uh, within the ecosystems uh, focus group. So we basically um, support, the, support the CHT core and that is what, that is one of the updates I'll be giving uh, today. So uh, what we've been working on currently, uh, uh, most recently is actually CHT Sync uh, in pipeline. So what Sync does is basically copy data from uh, the native CHT uh, data database, which is CouchDB, and uh, puts it in, in Postgres in real time. So 
this ensures that um, we have a very accurate copy of the current data um, uh, from from the CHD, uh, ready for analytics uh, as the as the the Postgres uh, database listens to uh, changes and updates this uh, this database ready for analytics. So on the left, you can see a diagram of the CHD core. So we have um, a couple of technologies there. So we have the log stash, which is basically used for syncing. Uh, we have a dashboard there, which, which is super set that connects to the Postgres SQL, uh, where that has been transformed into uh, via the DPT. So I'll be showcasing this, uh, uh, showcasing this just basically uh, how, it, how it works in terms of uh, how the data is actually being transformed. And uh, lastly is the, the synchronized data uh, from uh, from the couch from the couch DB, uh, it's it's the the raw data that is collected by the CH the CHWs, and then uh, we get all these we have all these transformed uh, through as you can see through the arrows all the way from uh, couch DB all the way to Postgres and then to Superset where uh, it can be just we have the UI there uh, with uh, with the UI with the analytics that uh, anyone can consume and basically get. Uh, make some decisions that are uh, data-driven. So yeah, the next one was on the dashboard that I've just mentioned. Uh, so we use Superset. Uh, so as you can see there, we have a dashboard that uh, shows you the number of SHWs and we have a, we have a table view there as well. Uh, this data is actually gotten from um, the transformations that we just talk, uh, talked about um, because of, now, now we are moving from this area. We have Couch to PG, and the enhancement now is CHD sync. So this sync, um, because of this uh, real-time sync, we, we we have an accurate um, representation of the data when you're pulling it in in the in the superset uh, dashboard. So you can use any any uh, dashboard tool that you'd like to connect to via APIs or um, whatever you connect it with. And uh, yeah, yeah. So what we are currently um, Finishing up on is just uh, is just the up, uh, updating the documentation. Uh, just have it out there. Uh, the docs, uh, the repo is ready. Uh, you can actually see it uh, on the on the on the GitHub, GitHub repo. I input a uh, link there to that. And also, we are looking into deploying uh, CHD Sync uh, and pipeline in production just to see how it how it will behave, uh, as opposed uh, as compared to uh, what you currently have in terms of couch uh, to PG. Uh, what we are looking at currently, a couple of projects could be uh, some of the big ones include uh, MOH Uganda and MOH Kenya. Uh, if we, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably move this conversation forward and have this in and have this in the in the in production and see how how it will work out. So we'll encourage everyone to just um, have a look at our repo. Uh, yeah, and I just showcase. Uh, uh, of, I just have a brief showcase of what is going on. Uh, in terms of um, the the sync, yeah, so here we have um, we have we have the CHT sync and pipeline um, containers. So they are, it's bundled up with a couple of technologies in there. We have the superset, we have couch, the CouchDB, Postgres, uh, DPT, and uh, Logstash and the generator. So what I'll just showcase here is that uh, is the generator where we have data, just some just some data being generated, which uh, is uh, just showcase that. So we have this uh, every thirty seconds, some some data is generated. If you can you can have a look based based on the timestamp. So every thirty seconds, we have some data being generated, um, and then from there, this data is uh, transformed via DPT, and you can actually see this here on the log stash. That is this this is the one that is currently syncing um, the data. So you can see uh, data being synced every couple of seconds. Um, you can actually see that every two seconds here, there's a message there. Yeah, so basically this is it. And then once you move from once you move from this, uh, you know, it's actually transformed into it transformed into Postgres. So for post for Postgres, which is the analytics database, you can actually now pull the time your analytics. So I'll just move back to my browser. So here I am. I'm on Superset. So within Superset, you're able to have your dashboard. So I just created one, which is a test dashboard. Uh, we don't have anything um, at the moment in terms of uh, uh, in terms of a default one because we just uh, you, you can actually do anything you want to do with it. So I'll click on this. 
um, what I created, what I have here is just uh, the, C, the, CH, the CHVs, the CHWs, uh, 2.5 k initially it was, a, it was a big and it was a lesser number when I when I created it and then because of the generation and then we can see they can can pull uh, uh, information on gender uh, even have a table view basically anything you would like in terms of uh, analytics you can actually just uh, come to the superset dashboard and 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 uh, pull this data so um, yeah that is it in terms of uh, the showcase. Uh, we encourage you to just um, go into our repo, uh, just have a look at have a look at this. Uh, uh, these are, you, can, you can actually um, uh, you can actually just have a local a lo local install it and uh, test it, and then share any insights or, um, or, or say any insights or questions that you may that you may have. So there's a question here: How different is CHT Sync from Couch to PG? Okay, um, for CHT Sync, um, they more or less work the same. However, uh, Sync is in real time. That would mean that um, if you uh, want to have data, uh, if you're pulling data, say for example, it could be a big amount of data with CHT Sync, it's a bit more effective. Uh, yeah, so basically that's, that's the enhancement that we have when you have like these big uh, implementations where uh, you're pulling enormous amounts of you know, and amounts of data. It may take some time uh, using couch to pg but for CHT Sync, uh, it's, it's real time, it's almost real time. Uh, it works better. That's the enhancement basically and the difference. So we had a setup where we were visualizing the data using uh, using a superset and uh, figuring out how to pull the data from couch to Postgres superset was a bit of a learning curve, but we finally did it. What under just a follow-up question to what Geoffrey had asked is that once you have a CHT sync, then does it mean you can directly uh, from a couch to using CHT sync to Postgres and then directly push it to your superset? Is that the, the, is that the flow? Yes, that's the flow. That's the, the the representation that we have at the moment in terms of CHT sync and pipeline. Thank you. In real time. I was just uh, just checking if uh, CHT sync, according to the architecture, um, sort of embeds supersets, and if that's um, a subtle implication or endorsement for superset um, for CHT or whether the superset was just the first tool to be used to, to test and complete this piece of work and Medic will be looking to do this with some of the other visualizing tools. Okay, um, for now we are using uh, superset uh, since uh, it's also an open source uh, tool. However, we'd be happy to look into others. Uh, if you have any suggestions, um, we could look into it and see how we could support that as well. Um, I was just curious when you said uh, it's in real time. Um, like, what's the time frame? Is it in milliseconds? Is it in minutes? Uh, yeah, Imran, to answer your question, it's uh, near real time. It's not exactly real time. Um, so the push from uh, Couch to uh, Couch DB to uh, Postgres is um, like in a matter of milliseconds. But then we also have to do some uh, modeling. Uh, that's where DBT comes in, and that runs on a daemon that you can set how long that takes to run. Um, so in a, the test setup that Philip showed, it runs every 10 minutes. But the data is already there in Postgres. You just need to model it so that it's um, available for your dashboards. Um, but that's configurable using the daemon. Uh, um, so it's near real time. It's not exactly real time, because it's there's always that delay when pushing from college DB to Postgres. Uh, first, thank you for the work. It's look really interesting and valuable. Um, is there because you you put some some links? So um, is there is there a, a link like to set up your uh, uh, what you displayed? Uh, is is it like integrated with uh, with the way we deploy CHT? <clears throat> so we can test this kind of setup quickly. Yes, you can actually set it up on Docker. Um, the instructions are actually there on the repository I shared. I'll just put it on, on chat as well. Thank you very much. I will test that soon. Hello, everyone. This is also my mic check. My question is whether we ever plan to integrate CHG sync directly in the CHD. So right now, our CHG uh, kind of like main bucket contains CHD core. 
and the main services that support it. But we have been thinking about uh, extending it with additional services and CHD Sync would be one of them. Uh, additionally, this, this brings another question about uh, configuration for CHD pipeline, which I understand is it part of the main configuration for the CHD? Do you use the same tool, CHD conf, to deploy it, or is there a plan to deploy this and manage this completely separately? Um, thanks, Diana. Um, I would think eventually we'd have it um, as as part of the CHD core, uh, but I'd like to invite my teammates if in case you have any any additional um, insights into this. Good, good answer. Um, for ease of use right now, I think it's uh, quite separate. Um, we can integrate it um, as part of uh, the CHT since everything is dockerized now and we can offer it um, uh, as part of that core package. Um, so that's um, in the, I'm not sure if it's in the pipeline, but it, it can definitely be part of the pipeline. Um, to answer your other question about um, the tools for managing, for example, pipelines on the models, um, yes. Uh, um, we were exploring ways to use stuff like CHD Conf um, so that you can um, build your models um, for like the dashboards and everything, uh, for the DBT models rather, um, so that everything is easier and you're using, you're using the same tools. Um, so that's still in the pipeline. It's work in progress, not quite yet complete. Hi. Uh, hi, all. my name is Hannah Kalamayo and I'm a site reliability engineer at Medic and a member of the infrastructure focus group. I'm going to give a quick update about infrastructure work we've been doing with regards to the future deployment of the CHC. So first of all, why we need this is to simplify things, to simplify the installation to just be one step running, one single script. And another point is basically uh, helping uptime reliability, um, help makes it easier to manage multiple and lots of uh, Docker containers, um, yeah, and self viewing and features that you'd require from orchestrators, basically. And the third and uh, a very important reason is to allow projects basically to scale by adding containers when there's high traffic, making it easier to handle high traffic and basically implement high availability. Um, where we are is we, we've completed the Kubernetes-based workflow and tested on EK, Amazon EKS, as well as we're testing locally on K3D, K3S style setups. And uh, we, we also have the documentation okay, completed. We're using the unified script and what to do when uh, the, the need for troubleshooting is uh, uh, there and those sorts of things. We, we also have wrapper scripts around uh, managing uh, the most common types of uh, ma ma management scenarios like uh, viewing logs, restarting things, st stuff like that, basically. And uh, we will uh, put up a blog post with that details uh, how to do what basically how to deploy things and yeah that, that's what where we are right now and we will also provide a demo in the next call hello everyone again um we've had three patch releases in the last month uh two of them were for 4.2 and one of them for 4.1 all of them address uh, important or critical bugs that we have found. So there is a strong urge or strong uh, recommendation to upgrade your instances. If you're running 4.1, please upgrade to 4.1.2. If you're running 4.2, please upgrade to 4.2.2. Uh, for 4.1, the issue that we discovered was that in case of containers going offline or restarting, there were chances that uh, there was a lack of communication between them. This can be very obvious when something just stops working, the instance stops working, or it can be subtle and you would discover that some forms that you have updated uh, do not show the updates in the UI. These, this is the issue that we fixed in 412. For 421, this is a minor update to just align configurations between self-hosted and medi-hosted environments. 
And, but for 4.2.2, there was there are two critical issues. One of them was uh, blocking the ability to scroll in the contact list to scroll beyond the first batch of contacts that is displayed. So even if you, the first batch of contacts is 50 contacts, and as you scroll down, this is the normal behavior, you would load 50 more and 50 more infinitely until you finished your, your list of available contacts. In 4.2.1 and 4.2, this would not happen and you would not see beyond the 50 contacts. The other issue that we fixed was that telemetry documents did not were lacking information about the CHT version that was running on the device. The version was reported as unknown. This blocked uh, programs from viewing the status of their updates. This is also fixed in 4.2.2. So all telemetry documents that are generated beyond that will have correct version information. Strong urge to upgrade, please. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, this is exciting. Lad. I remember the uh, the conversation that was carried out with Regan last week, and I'm looking forward for the GitHub and all the associated documents so that I can check in with our existing infrastructure and share the experiences around the gate. Thank you. <laughs>